my friends. Welcome back to the Northfield Podcast. I'm your host, Caleb Gordon. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to be a part of the program today. Um, man, looking forward to 2024. We've got some great things coming down the pike. Um, we're going to have a couple different events, uh, one in January, one in February. Today, I'm going to have on the program Pastor Brett Baggett. He's going to be one of our speakers at our Built to Conquer conference that's going to be taking place in Pahuska, Oklahoma, in the historic Constantine Theater. Really, really looking forward to this exciting event. Um, six speakers that are just going to be gospel centered and just drive the home drive home the idea that Christians were built to conquer, and we were built to cultivate and, and to create uh, for the glory of God and for the betterment of mankind. Um, so I'm looking forward to this conversation with Pastor Brett Baggett. Um, if you want more information on the conferences and events that we're putting together, just check out my website, calebgordon.org, um, and you'll get all the information for the events right there. So pray this conversation today blesses you and spurs you on. Welcome to the Northfield Nation, Pastor Brett Baggett. How are you doing, my friend? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. Doing uh, doing fantastically. You have a great Christmas? Yes, very good. Good, good, good. Well, man, uh, I'm excited you you're, you you made time to come on the podcast to talk about uh, built to conquer, and and that's our our theme for the conference in February. And um, I'm just excited that we we were at a conference together and just kind of in the the booth area, and you and I had talked about doing something like this, and and so we just yeah. decided to we'll put it together. So, um, man, I'm excited about you being there. So, talk about this idea of of built to conquer. What do you what is, when you think of that idea? What do you what do you think of? Well, first of all, I think of the creation mandate in Genesis one twenty eight that God creates man and it's an image, and He gives him a job to do, and He says God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the lower creation. Come on. Yeah. So first of all, I think of that. That's why God created human beings to, to conquer, to rule over, to fill the earth, to subdue it and to do it in a way that images him and shows his glory by us being image bearers that we should be. So you think about that, that's, that's really, that's why human beings exist to have dominion over lower creation for the glory of God, fill the whole earth with his image bearers. Absolutely. So when it comes to, I, I post, I posted something the other day uh, and the idea of, of men uh, ruling and, and how men are going to, you know, we're built to conquer where men are going to ru rule, rule regardless. It's just a matter of what type of men rule. And I had a comment, throw, somebody threw a comment in the bottom of it said, I feel like um, the rule, the name, the title or the word rule is archaic. Why do you, why do you think mm -hmm. in 2024 um, we have people that are in Christian who, who say they're Christians, who, who say they love and follow the Lord Jesus Christ struggle with us, this idea of rulership that, that God has designed us to rule? Well, probably because they've been influenced by feminism and they don't even realize it. Yeah. Because they have, like, I think a majority of the evangelical church has been radically influenced by all three waves of feminism um, that started in the late or mid to late 1800s and have gone up into this day. People have no idea until they start looking at what Christians taught and believed before those waves and then how the church just cowered to the feminist movements and the waves of feminism. And so they, they, that's probably the, the natural explanation for it, but the real bedrock of it is because they don't submit to what God says in his word about authority structures that he's put in place. And that it is a, it is a good thing to have rulers over yeah. you. It's a good thing for a husband to rule over his wife. And people hear that and like rule over like, yes, rule over, but yeah. not, not in a sinful way, not in right. a domineering way, not, but in a good way, just like the civil government rules over the people, but it's for their good when they're doing what they should. It's for their good because yeah. it protects those and provides the the protection and the celebration that people need and just like a a father ruling 
over his children or ruling over a husband ruling over his wife. It's a good and godly thing where provision and protection happens and godly leadership happens. Yeah. It's the it's, same it's, thing with the elders ruling over a local church. It's a good thing for godly qualified men who are in that office in a local church to rule over the congregation. And God has created the world like that with yeah, different it, forms it, of government. And it's a good and godly thing by nature. It's a good and godly thing to yeah, have. It, it, this is, this is pre fall. This was not post fall stuff. This was pre fall. Right. That God instituted all these things of dominion and, and rulership. And I don't know what it's been in the last 80 to hundred years where we've just made it, made it sound like it's some sort of oh, submit or ooh rulers that just, that's archaic and that's evil and that's bad. And I'm like, that's not what the scripture says. That's not what the Bible says at right. all. Um, it, yeah, so it, maybe we should say, yes, it is archaic. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we can go all the way back to, yes, it's uh, from the beginning, from the foundation. This is how yeah. God created everyone and everything. And this is how things should function if they're going to be done in a way that gives most joy to people and most glory to God. Yeah. And, and that and that's the thing that's interesting to me is I every relationship that I know where things are are humming along the way they should in terms of marriages, in terms of churches, in terms of civil government, where, where people are doing what they're supposed to do. They're living in the creative order that God set forth. They're incredibly happy. Like, I don't know a wife that's like, golly, I hate having to just have an amazing husband who provides and protects and loves me. Well, I, I just don't know a woman who says that, who's, who loves the Lord and her husband loves the Lord. Yeah. But quite to the contrary, I know a ton of people who struggle in their marriages because she wants to be the head and and he sort of kind of lets her and and it's just sort of kind of this back and forth chaos. And, yeah, that's and it, absolutely right. And it's it, it you would think with just just a modicum of sense, just a little bit of logic, yeah. that people would go, "This hasn't been working. It's not working." Yeah. And, and I see how you're doing your they do not see. Right, right. And it's just a weird thing where you see people are doing this and they they look at somebody like you or they look at somebody that that has their and they're like, well, I just don't understand how in the world your 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 marriage seems so great. Your 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 church seems so great. How come? Well, because we're doing what God told us to do. And, yeah. and it's not like it's uh without trials and without sin. It's not like that, but there's a difference in battling against sin and temptation and things like that. And then adding to that, that you've structured things wrongly. Yeah. Like if you have a, you know, if you have a storm come a really strong storm, it may harm your house, but it's going to be detrimental to those inside the house. If the house is not built as it should, and the storm comes and it's just, Boom, it just destroys everything inside everything. because it's not structured properly. Uh, a storm can still mess up a house and hurt those inside the house, but it's going to do a lot more damage if the house is not structured as it should be. And that that's how it is. That's how it is with marriages, with churches, with societies. Yeah. No, I agree 100%. It's 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 good to hear that. Um so when it comes to Dominion. So you and I were introduced um, through, we, had, we have a couple of mutual friends. Um, you and I were introduced at a murder mill, uh, AKA right. an abortion clinic. Um, right. Tulsa. And we were in, that's, that's where we sort of kind of got introduced. Mm -hmm. And, and you have been taking, you have been the forefront, the guy at the forefront um, leading from not behind, but you've been leading from the front saying, Hey, we need to eradicate, and not regulate abortion when it comes to taking taking back ground, dominion, um, having rulership. Uh, this idea of protecting the unborn. Uh, I know you you're in the process of working on some some documentaries and some some different things that are going on. Talk about taking back ground and 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 having rulership in the area of protecting the unborn. Yeah, well, those are kind words that you've said, and I appreciate it. But I'm still just I'm following other people. Sure. that have gone ahead of me and have said, Hey, what are you doing? And God used other people like uh, the Norman crowd and guys like Russell Hunter and Norman yep. and other people to just keep blowing the trumpet and hoping 
praying that God would wake his people up. Yeah. And then finally, a few years ago, the Lord did wake me up that I was just being apathetic towards sure. my neighbors that are being carried off to death. But yeah, by God's grace, we've been trying to push forward and love our neighbors as ourselves and not close our eyes in the midst of this Holocaust. But what does it look like to take back ground or whatever in that? It, yeah. it really just looks like men actually doing what God created men to do, which is to provide and protect. The Lord put Adam in the garden to work it and to keep it, to mm. work it, you know, provide provision, yeah. build those kind of things to keep it. That word keep means guard, protect. You can see even foundationally that God created men and deposited them in this world to provide and protect, first of all, for their own families, but then beyond that, even for their neighbors. And so we have Proverbs 24, 11, rescue those being taken away to death. We've got Psalm 82, like give justice to the weak and the fatherless, maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. Uh, don't, how long will you show unjust or injustice? How, how long will you show partiality to the wicked? Stop mm. it. All yeah. of these kind of things that are the protect the innocent commands. And so it's not just that we are to protect protect and provide for our families like Adam has put in the garden to work and to keep it. Mm -hmm. We're also to do that for our neighbors. You well, know, Paul says, even with a uh, financial provision, let the thief no longer steal, but let him work hard with his own hands, not just so that he can provide for himself and his family, but he says so that he may have something to share with others yep. Yep. who are in need. I was and just so going to say that vision goes further than the family. Yeah. The protection goes further than the family too. Um, Those who are weak and vulnerable and being taken away to death, like our preborn neighbors are in the womb. It's our duty to love our neighbors as ourselves, to do unto others as we would have them do to us. And that is what God has deposited men in this world. Those are some of the main functions of men, provision, protection. And so really we just need Christian men to actually act like Christian men and say, who is, who's being harmed? I need to protect them. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Um, now are you, if I, if I remember correctly, are you, you're working on a project right now? Uh, because a lot of people will say, well, well, wait a minute, Brett, wait a minute. Abortion has been outlawed in Oklahoma. Uh, you boys in the, live in Oklahoma. It's been outlawed, right? So you, why, why are you still blowing this trumpet? Cause it's, it's not, it's not happening in Oklahoma. What do you, yeah. how do you, how do you respond to that? Well, first of all, I'd say there's probably more babies murdered in Oklahoma every day by abortion than were mur than were murdered pre Roe being overturned and pre our new laws. Yeah. That's the first thing that people, we don't even have numbers for it anymore because it's under the radar and because our politicians in our state have made it illegal to murder babies at an abortion clinic. But they have explicitly not made it illegal to murder babies, specifically for the mother. So now mothers are learning that they can order abortion pills online, sometimes for free, sometimes for $150 or $200, which is way cheaper than it used to cost when you had to go to an abortion clinic. They're learning that you can do that without any legal consequences and that abortion is not illegal and that women are given a free pass. They're given rights to murder their own children. And it's now in the privacy of their own home. And so we're, we're in the middle of making a docu-series. Episode one has already been released. Episode two will be released, Lord willing, in the next couple of weeks. And there'll be six total episodes, Lord willing. And this docu-series is exposing the fact that abortion is still legal in all 50 states. And it's also exposing the fact that the pro-life movement is lying to people and saying it's illegal or that there are 14 states which are abortion free, abortion free. Right. Which is just not true. The abortion clinics in these 14 or 15 states are closed, but their laws explicitly state that a woman shall not be in any way or prosecuted for getting an abortion. And so women know now it's like, oh, I can I can self-manage my own abortion and that is perfectly legal. And I've been given the right to do that 
And that's not pro-abortionists. That's not pro-aborts who are passing those laws. That's pro-lifers yep. who are passing those laws and explicitly killing bills that would actually protect all image bearers with the same homicide laws that protect you and me. The pro-life movement is the reason abortion is still legal in these 14 quote-unquote abortion-free states. And so we're making this docuseries to help Christians know the pro-life movement's lying to you, first yeah. of all, and they're actually the ones who are standing in the way of abortion being abolished because they think that a woman who willfully murders her child should not be held liable for that or not even given due process of the law. She should just be given blanket immunity, the pro-life movement yeah. is pushing for and says. That a woman should never be prosecuted. It's like, yeah. okay, then babies are going to keep being murdered because you have shown partiality to the wicked, as Psalm 82 tells you you must not do. You're using false weights and measures. You're treating one person like this and another person like this by not treating everyone equally. Yeah. And so babies are still being murdered by the millions. And it's not going to stop until we actually make it illegal to murder babies for everyone, for yeah. anyone. And just, that's... just the same way it's illegal for a woman to murder her three-year-old child. Yeah. And we would all agree, you shouldn't give the mother blanket immunity for murdering her three-year-old child. I think everyone agrees on that. Like, no. then why yeah. should you give the mother blanket immunity for murdering her three-month-old child in the womb? I, I yeah, it, and back to the idea of lo logic. If I decide to just get hammered, I go I go get a drink, and I just drink and drink and drink and drink, and I just get hammered. And I get behind the wheel, and I hit a pregnant woman in her car, and I kill that baby in the womb. I'm prosecuted, right? For the, double the logic's not yeah, there. in many states. Yeah, that's right. I, the logic is not there. And so I'm I'm just like, how can we go from if I decide to go get drunk and then hit a pregnant woman in my car, I get prosecuted at, for, for manslaughter at, at the bare minimum, yeah. at the bare right. minimum, I get. But you get you get that. due process of law, which everyone should. Everyone and should. And women who willfully murder their children should get due process of law as well. You should. It, yep. For some reason, the, the pro-life movement wants to paint these women who get abortions as victims. And li yeah. listen, I, I don't, that I, I know that there are moments in time where women are victims, but you don't, you don't destroy the baby in the womb for the sins of the father. Right. Uh, we, we, I was just telling uh, our, our brother in Christ, Pastor Chris Gore, this story uh, last, um, I don't know, it's a couple of weeks ago. I have a friend that we met or that just lives not too far from us. Um, they were in our house and she, this was, this was before she was a believer tells the story of how she was right before she got married, she got raped hmm. and her and her husband decided that it's not this baby's fault that I got raped, that That's she right. carried the baby. He is now a contributing member of society. My boys ran with him, had fun with him, did all, you know, they, did all this stuff with him. And this was a, she was not even a believer. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. how in the world can we not understand these, these simple ideas as pro-life people? Mm -hmm. We say we're against abortion and we want to see abortion outlawed to some, they, they want to, they say that, I mean, they, they use that terminology. Yeah. We need, we yeah, want to see it. It's not for the mother. Right. And I'm just yeah. like, I, I, it, it, we have this, this disconnect with, with language and understanding uh, I, I said the other day, I said, Christian nationalism is not a bad thing whatsoever. And people are like, wait a minute, wait a minute. And I'm just like, and then they, they equate Christian nationalism with Trump being King. And I'm just like, right. That's like, not, no, Christian that's nationalism. not Christian. <laughs> Trump is not a Christian. And so right. people sit there and they say things like this and they say, well, we want abortion gone, but we don't want to prosecute women who have abortions. Well, then you're going to continue to have abortions regardless. Right. So because the we, purpose of laws like that is not the purpose is not to prosecute women. The person or the purpose is that the civil government does what God has ordained them to, which is to be a terror to evildoers by threatening them with punishment. And so that the evildoer who's thinking about doing a wicked act will yeah. not do it because yeah. of the threat of punishment. 
Exactly. And ultimately, we want people's hearts to be changed by the there gospel. Go. But the job of the church is to wield the sword of the spirit mm -hmm. and proclaim the truth of the gospel and the mercy of God in Christ, which changes hearts. That is not the job of the civil government. Amen. God has instituted the civil government to be a terror to evildoers, to keep people from doing more evil and punishing those who do the evil yep. and approving of those and celebrating those who do good. The The civil government has been given the sword of the flesh to execute justice. Justice, yeah. And the church has been given the sword of the spirit to proclaim the mercy of God and so that hearts and minds are changed. But sometimes it's the job of the church to use the sword of the spirit to tell the civil government, you need to rightly use the sword of the flesh. Yeah, It's your job, civil government, to tell evildoers by waving the sword and saying, don't murder other human beings or we're going to prosecute you. And that what that does is keeps people from murdering as much as they would. Just imagine if the homicide code disappeared. Yeah. We think you think there are a lot of murders now. Imagine if they gave blanket immunity to different classes of people that said you can murder other human beings and not be prosecuted for it. If you don't think murders would increase a hundredfold, then you don't understand the sinfulness of the human heart yeah. and the blessing that the civil government is that God has put the civil government in the world to bring about more peace than there would be without it. Well, you, you see just the small pocket of it in these crazy leftist cities that have pulled just the 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 codes where if you steal under a thousand dollars, you're not going to be prosecuted. And these stores right. just ransacked with right. insanity. And, and so you see that and you're just like, well, golly, yeah, if they if they pulled back those codes, you couldn't go to the store like you couldn't right. you couldn't walk around the block. Yeah. Just, and people, credit. yeah, people wonder like, how can we have 60 plus million children murdered in the womb? Like it's easy. The civil government allowed it to happen. Yeah. They didn't say you shall not murder. No, you can't murder other human beings, period. You can't do it. There still would have been abortions, back alley abortions, illegal abortions, all that, but not near as many because the civil government would have said, uh, no, you can't do that. And if you do that, you're going to be prosecuted. going to be prosecuted. Absolutely. That's their that's their job. And so that thwarts the evildoer from doing that evil they would have done. And so it's not just the civil government's fault. It's the church's fault for standing by. And not using the sword of the spirit, which is the scripture, the word of God, and telling the civil government, God actually has a lot to say to you about your job and why he has instituted this form of government. And he says, it's your job to be a terror to the evildoers, to punish the wicked, and to approve of those who do good. And that is one of the ways that God maintains peace in societies is through the, gov through the civil government actually doing what yeah. he's instituted them to do. It's the church's job to tell the civil government what their duties are because the church has the scriptures. Come on. And so that hundred percent. And so that great segue, I want to go pull back into what we're, what our idea is this built to built to conquer. We, we see all the insanity. We see all the crazy. We see all the, the wickedness that's out there. Yes. We're people that are, are um, that have, the idea that we were built to conquer and that we can have dominion over the things that are happening in this world. Um, I, I want us to, how do we get there? What, what do we, what do we do as, as Christ followers? Um, what's our role? How do we step into that better? Well, simple, simple things. I think we need to bring everything down really practically and people yeah. need to hear that you need to start practically and take the Great Commission, that's your mission. Make disciples, teaching them to observe or obey everything that Christ has commanded. So we proclaim the gospel of God and the law of God and help people get converted through faith in Jesus Christ and then learn how to obey him, yeah. to glorify him and enjoy him. And so that pushing Christ's crown rights into every bit of life is what it looks like, but it needs to start practically. It needs to start with everybody individually. Yeah. So anybody listening, you personally need to brought, be brought into subjection to Christ. You are responsible for yourself. 
You need to be disciplined and fruitful with what the Lord has given you, not just first starting to think about the nation or your church or your city, but you, you need to be brought in subjection to Christ. You need to use what he's given you for his glory. Next, our homes all need to be brought in subjection to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're a wife, you need to submit to your husband and stop trying to usurp the authority that God has given him to pr- protect and provide for you, hmm. both physically and spiritually. Amen. You need to submit in, in a way that honors the Lord. If you don't, then the word of the Lord is reviled because of you. That's what God says through Paul in Titus 2, that women would love their husbands, love their children, be hard workers at home, else the word of God is reviled because of women trying to act like men in or outside the home. Men, if you're a husband, you need to love and lead your wife by laying down your life for her as Christ loved and laid down his life for the church. So you need to get yourself in order, submitting to Christ in all aspects of life. You need to get your home in order, submitting to Christ and doing daily family worship. Men, you need to be leading your family in family worship All of it starts there. You're not going to see dominion go and conquering go in society and the church and the culture if if you don't get yourself and your home in order first. Amen. I I I can't can't disagree with that at all. And so there is a um you you've written a book and I'm just gonna I'm gonna plug your book for just a second here. It, It is a simple, solid, easy read. You can have it done. I mean, you can have it done in a day. Um, Yeah. And and it is it has three principled ideas of of worship. Men who who worship break down those three ideas for us, and and how yeah, sure. we can apply those in our lives. Yeah, I think these are foundational. These are fundamental. We're not really going to see reformation in our society at large until we individually are reformed to the scriptures, mm. and then our homes are reformed to the scriptures, and then our churches, and then societies, and everything everything starts there. So the book is called Worship the Lord Like Men. Worship the Lord Like Men. Like Be a man and worship the Lord. Godly men, manly men, worship the Lord. The manliest man who ever lived outside of Christ surely is David, who killed bears and lions with his bare hands. And he also wrote a majority of the songs in the scripture. Yeah, He's a singer. He's a praiser. He led people in worship. And worship is not just song, but it certainly includes that. So the book is designed to help help men understand public worship, private worship, and family worship. And to say, you need to be offering up to the Lord and leading your family in offering up public worship. This is the assembly of the saints on the Lord's Day, on Sundays, when we gather together as the church to worship through hearing the word, through taking the Lord's Supper, through prayers, through uh, fellowship, all those ways that are prescribed in the scriptures that we worship God publicly. That's corporate worship, public worship. But also you need to worship the Lord privately and what people, you know, in the nineties called a quiet time, but really (laughs) should be called private worship. You're worshiping the Lord just alone. You're getting into your closet as Christ says, metaphorically or literally, but you're getting alone and quiet and separated, separated from your phone, separated from others and reading the scripture, meditating on the scripture, confessing your sin, praying, and worshiping the Lord in those ways privately. But most uh, most neglected in our day is family worship, hmm. to where the head of the household leads his family to the throne of grace in prayer and song and scripture and catechism. And yeah. leads his family to offer up worship to the Lord as a household. It's not just praying before dinner or something like that. It's a, a structured time that you come together. Could be 10 minutes, could be 45 minutes, depending on the age of your children or if you have children and all of that. And you offer up worship to the Lord as a family, which is what you'll deduce we should do if you examine the scriptures. Yeah. And so I've, I've written the book to help people understand why and how to offer up public worship, why and how to offer up private worship when you're alone, and why and how to offer up family worship with your household. 
Fantastic. I, I have the book myself. I have actually uh, given that book away to several guys at our church, and they they have told me that they are really enjoying that. So I appreciate you putting that out there for for guys to have. Um, yeah, praise God. Hope it's yeah. a blessing. It, it has been. It has been. Thank you. Um, really quick, if if people are interested in finding out more about you and what you're doing with with abolition, the abolition movement, and 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 all that kind of fun stuff, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, Facebook. Brett Anthony Baggett on Facebook, or I'm I'm on Twitter as well, Brett A. Baggett. Um, as far as uh, abolition, stuff like that, I would, I would encourage you to go to YouTube and follow Abolitionists Rising. Abolitionists Rising on YouTube. Um, they put out a lot of great content. I'm on the board of Abolitionists Rising, though you're not going to see me on the YouTube or anything like that, really. But... Um, that's the organization that is doing a lion's share of the work that is doing a lot of good and godly work. And then rescue those is I'm the president of an organization called rescue those. And we're in partnership with foundation to abolish abortion to make this documentary. And so I'd really encourage you go follow abolitionists rising on YouTube and all their other various social medias, abolitionists rising. And then also go to abortion free.com abortionfree.com that's where you can go and check out the docu series that we're currently making to help people understand this is actually the state of abortion in the United States of America and this is what you should be doing about it to love your neighbor as yourself and to glorify the Lord yeah. the first episode is already out the second episode will be out before too long but you can go and check that out there fantastic love it well, I am looking forward. Hey, all right. That's awesome. We've got our, our homeschool co-op is meeting today. And this is this is Hi. Eva. Hi, Eva. Great to this meet is, you. This is number five. And she frequently comes back and sneaks into my office. That's fantastic. I love it. That's awesome. Kids are always welcome. We, we love kids. So that's awesome. Um, man, we're so excited that you're going to be here uh, with us at the conference and, and just the, we're about a month away, a month and a half away. Um, can't wait to hear your message that you're going to be sharing. Um, so would you, uh, do you just dismiss us in prayer as we end up the podcast today? Yes. Hey, let's pray. Okay. okay. Our father, we come to you in Christ's name and we ask you to bless those who get to listen to this, this podcast and we ask you to encourage them, to challenge them through it for your glory. And may you enable us to be godly men and women who conquer, as you've told us to, by putting our sin to death, by looking to Christ and following Christ, and by living for his glory and our good. Enable us to do that for your great name's sake. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Awesome. It's great. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks, Caleb. Three, two, one.